Okay. What? The 80s called. Just want to do a quick overview of my AV switcher setup here. And I'll also cover the component switcher while I'm at it. Uh, so I just replaced this one. Just got it replaced today, actually. Uh, I'll, I'm going to show you my old one that I that I replaced. Had that for uh, you know almost ten years, maybe eight uh, eight years, nine years, something like that. Uh, so for the thirty bucks I paid for it, didn't didn't really owe me anything. That was a, a five by two, uh, five inputs and two outputs. So I had everything I could uh, could ever theoretically want, even for outputting to a capture card and a monitor at the same time it was a powered switcher and uh, never really gave me any trouble until uh, until so sometime recently I couldn't tell you exactly when but I noticed that uh, left channel audio was uh, uh, really quiet and so eliminated it uh, eliminated that the switcher itself as the problem at any given input it was pulling that down so I might tear that apart just out of curiosity to see what what failed um, if, if I can figure it out and uh, yeah, it looked very much like this. Uh, this is just for the <clears throat> the sound um, between the uh, component or composite setup, uh, depending on what I'm doing. So as, as the old switcher was the same style as this one. This one's unpowered, but this the case and everything button design is all the same. I just put a little piece of double sided tape to stick that down there, and uh, I think it looks pretty clean. Um, anyway, so this is a this new one is a shiny bow four by four. Uh, which again is definitely more than I need one less input than I had before and then three uh, two you know two more outputs than I could ever need really um, but anyways uh, definitely higher quality you can tell this is this is a you know not like high-end gear but it's like in kind of entry level like commercial or whatever kind of gear um, so yeah anyways I'm, I'm happy with it and it's gonna work out good I think so um, and I could probably if I wanted to do some kind of cool like display up set up with display with a few CRTs or something I would have the means to do that I guess anyway and then over here on this side I've had this for a little bit longer um, this is my component switcher and it is a four by two which is more more like it uh, this is still a matrix switcher though both of these are there's no reason for that uh, for my setup I could just as easily have a routing switcher because uh, whatever whatever input I'm viewing on the screen is going to be the same one as uh, I'm get, I want to get on the capture card or whatever uh, you know whatever external device I'm sending it to so uh, ideally I would have a four by two or five by two component routing switcher and same for composite but uh, in both I have a, a matrix switcher for both which is for both is more than what I need more functionality than I need but uh, certainly has me covered for anything I could ever want to do digital displays on these which again I could go for just I'd be fine with just LEDs you know just one two three or four kind of thing but um, yeah both good quality components so I'm happy with those um, let's take a look at the uh, old one so back at the desk here there's the old switcher oh five by two here it was uh, trusty for a long time this one does s video as well so this one uh, um, has some ways more features even um, for much much less money but um, as you can see it didn't didn't I mean it, it lasted it lasted a long time for, for what I paid for it for sure um, but I think that that shiny that new one I replaced it with that shiny bow will work for 20 years you know with the same amount of usage with with no problem is, is my prediction so um, Anyhow, so this thing's pretty got some pretty good weight to it. You know, it's not entirely cheesy, and it is a powered switcher. You know, so you're not. It is theoretically capable of uh, of just you know outputting to two sources without uh, signal quality degradation. And like I said, for my uses, it, it seemed to work fine um, up until it didn't. So somehow, um, and I think I did test out of the. Out of out, output two as well. It's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about that. So I might. One of the first tests I might do is is just hook something up and and go through output two and see if it's still, um, even before I take it apart, and see if that makes a difference. So, anyways, we got that audio manual switch. 
I was talking about there. That always was a little bit glitchy, even from the start. Um, to have it on auto, have it auto select the input, and it would uh, it would it would drop out at random times. So um, I, I had it on manual for pretty much all all of my life there with it. You see, I got my my little custom labels there for my game consoles. Anyways, power supply. So if uh, if nothing else, I guess it could still function as just a video switcher. Uh, it could do composite just fine and, and S video. So I'm, I may still keep it around even if I can't uh, resolve the left audio channel issue. So we'll see. So we got this video switcher taken apart here. I was having the left issues with the left channel audio. So that's what I'm going to try to isolate today. Um, I'm actually going to, everything was running through output one. So I'm actually going to test output two before I do anything else and just, uh, see if the issue is repeated there or not. And that will kind of help isolate the issue. There's a lot of little capacitors on here, uh, very cheap capacitors. So I won't be surprised if that's what that's the issue. See some discoloration on this hot glue here. I'm not sure if that's heat related or that cap has failed. I'm not sure. It's not really in the area I, I would be thinking, but so it's uh, definitely affecting both outputs. So yeah. So poking around a little bit, I'm set let this soak here for a minute, but I think this board right here is uh, specifically for the output. This little kind of sub board off of here. So I'm soaking these two glue spots on either end with isopropyl alcohol. And uh, hopefully be able to get those off there and uh, desolder these two connectors here. Not always that easy, but the isopropyl alcohol does work wonders on the super glue or the hot glue. It's a little tougher to get at. And at the very least, um, outputs are over on that side anyways, so if it's other capacitors in that area, I'll kind of want that board out of the way anyhow, so this will be worth it. We'll uh, fire up the soldering station here. Yeah, round nose tweezers, 90% alcohol. Definitely big time friends when you're uh, working on stuff like this. Full disclosure, I did mar it up a little bit over here. Um, this looked like it. I'm not so sure now, now that I see the color of this glue over here. But this, this looked kind of suspicious. So I kind of tried my... Uh, and I did the same procedure there. I'm not sure why that one was so much harder to get off. But I did kind of mar take a little bit of the solder resist off there. I don't think I broke any traces, so, you know, this thing's not working anyhow, so no big deal.
So, I don't know, we got this off of here. See what these caps are. I've got, you know, I've got a box full of shitty caps too, you know. We can, these things lasted 10 years. You can put more 10 year capacitors in there. Uh, oh, one and two there, yeah, so. I'm gonna go ahead and soak that while we're, while I'm working on this board. Okay.
Burp. Desoldering gun, go burp. Yeah, so um, it actually <clears throat> actually seemed to work. The output sounded clean, both channels. So um, I think, yeah, I think I'll call it good. I was thinking about replacing more capacitors, but I'm not so sure about that. Hmm. It's quite a bit more, quite a bit more to consider doing like a full recap, so. I think we'll call it there, actually.